Welcome everyone to the Kia Knicks post game show tonight in Chicago. Alfred Payton scored 10 of his 20 in the first quarter as the Knicks held on to beat the Bulls 107 to 103. The Knicks lead at one point in the first quarter was 19 points. It was a 15 point lead after three. Lowry Markkinen scored only nine, but the Bulls were within three. Julius Randle though, and the Knicks held on. Randle, 27 points, and the Knicks win it by four. Back in our Delta MSG studios, great to have you with us. Bill Pito along with Wally Zerbiak. Alan Hahn joins us from his home studio, and there was some, Alan, there was some trepidation. <laughs> if you're the Knicks, get to the airport, get on the plane, Alan, and get mm -hmm. out of town. Absolutely. But, you know, one stat did hold up, and I heard you mention it at halftime, and that is Alfred Payton, that starting point guard position. It just shows you how important it is. The Knicks are now 8-2. and two when he makes, just makes, five baskets in a game. Five. He had that in the first quarter, so they were off to a good start. Eight and two, though. I mean, that's 10 out of the 23 games they've played so far. It's not like it's a small sample size. So that's it's amazing, and it's for him to get even to 20 points, it just shows you that he might say, I'm not paying attention to what people say, but he definitely is hearing it, and he made a case to stay right where he is, even though Emmanuel quickly has been pushing him for that starting position. Yeah, he was great tonight. He really was. I, I just think he's a vet, and, you know, I, I, I got to give Tom Thibodeau a ton of credit. The adjustments he made from Monday to tonight, defending the three-point line, six for 36 from the three-point line were the Chicago Bulls. I don't think Tom Thibodeau minds. Obviously, he doesn't want to give up points in the paint and doesn't want to give up 70% in the restricted area like Allen brought up as with his stat at the begin, in, in the pregame. But you have to defend that three-point line. This is a good three-point shooting team. They can kill you from three. And the Knicks did a much better job of getting out the shooters and contesting. Bottom line for the Knicks, if Alfred Payton scores 10 points or thereabouts in the first quarter of these games, it's going to change the whole dynamic of how things evolve. And down the stretch, the Knicks, it's a good thing they had the pad because yeah. they had to hold on, Wally, for dear life tonight. They did. And you know this Bulls team, especially in a back-to-back -back type scenario, they have a lot of pride, and they're going to play hard. And there's Patrick Williams, who's rumbling, bumbling, stumbling his way to get the team back to within seven. Then Den Denzel Valentine found Daniel Gafford. Five-point game. Knicks can't make a basket. Three-point game. 99-96 after the market and dunk. But then, in Julius Randle, we trust Nick fans, makes every big play that the team needed. Uh, that three extended the lead back to six by Bullock. Alfred Payton gets in the paint, knocks down a little turnaround, lead back to eight. Knicks were getting consecutive stops. And then what a tough shot Julius Randle made. I mean, he was on fire from the three-point line. He had five threes tonight. He did absolutely everything out there on the floor. The Knicks are asking him to be clutch in clutch moments, make plays that normally a point guard or a guard would make in order to create some offense off a of pick and roll. He's going one-on-one, -on -one, making, um, taking advantage of his matchup and also making plays for his teammates. I mean, he gets into the paint. He draws double teams. He's finding open guys for shots. He just needs guys to deliver. And that three that Bullock made was, I think, the shot of the game. It really, the Knicks needed that one at that time. Alan, it was interesting to watch Peyton in the first quarter. He really was very aggressive but also he hit the offensive boards and the putbacks got him off to a great start in that first 12 minutes yeah it's important for him to be aggressive I mean, that's one thing that tom thibodeau always asks of his guards that's what he wants he wants you to be aggressive get into the paint put pressure on the defense he doesn't want you dribbling out on the perimeter he doesn't want you playing slow once you cross cross half court and i thought that peyton did that in this game we haven't seen him do that nearly enough but you know what else he did as we're seeing here he finished at the rim. It's one of his biggest issues. Even early on in the game when he had a layup or two, he still missed a few of them. That's been his struggle. But in this game, he was able to knock down those shots around the basket. It got him into rhythm, and it got the Knicks off into a good good start to this game. Wally, Peyton had eight rebounds for the game. Seven of those came in the first quarter, and the Bulls as a team in the first quarter only had eight rebounds. So Peyton really changed the dynamic of the game in the first quarter with his work on the boards. Yeah. Both ends. He has the ability to hang around the basket and help out under the boards. He's a big guard. He's a physical guard, and he spends time around the basket because he's not just out there as a floor spacer. So if he's going to be around the in the paint, especially on the offensive end of the floor, might as well take advantage and get some offensive rebounds and get some extra possessions. 
but you have to make sure someone's getting back on defense because normally it's the two guards jobs to be floor balanced and to not be going to the offensive boards allowing the big guys to do that because someone's got to get back and prevent transition uh, opportunities for the other team but Alfred has a good pulse on that he's a veteran and I thought he really uh, came out strong and attacked and was aggressive at the beginning of the game guys uh, Julius Randle it seemed every time that the Bulls were making a run oh. Randall came through with big shots. Yep. You mentioned he tied. A, he had a great night from three. He tied a career high with five makes from downtown, and he finished with 27 points. Wally. Yeah, and that's what your best player and leader has to do because you know they built themselves a nice lead, and they should have been able to just coast to a victory. But the second unit just at times gets a little streaky, and Julius Randall just had to come in there and be the guy and be the closer and make those big plays and those big shots you know in that first quarter he just really got into a rhythm shooting that three I like when he shoots threes consecutively you know we've seen the best three point shooters they make them in spurts and bunches um, you know once you kind of calibrate that jump where you make one might as well be aggressive and shoot a couple more in a row and that was the one he hit at the end of the third quarter which extended the lead up to 15 but these are tough shots I mean he's He's got a really good one on one game reminds me a little bit of Carmelo Anthony in the mid range the way he can create a shot off the dribble and pull up and knock down shots with defenders draped all over him. That's another really spectacular performance that the Knicks really needed. I'll tell you what Wally what I liked also is he did it in a quiet way but he was answering Zach Levine because what I saw from Zach Levine in the second half was a guy it was dog doing a lot of barking out there and I was saying to myself. All right, what dog is going to bark back at him? Who is going to shut him down? Because he was trying to excite his team and get his team to make this comeback. He was doing a lot of trash talking after baskets, and it was Julius Randle who did it. He's the one who answered him on each one, saying, I can match you. I can do this, too. I can do this all night. But he didn't, doesn't do it with demonstrative way. He just does it, keeps his mouth shut, and just keeps playing. And, and I, the Knicks needed somebody like that, and it's been a while since they've had somebody like that on a consistent basis. Alan, uh, you've been emphasizing, uh, at least in the pregame show and in the postgame the other night, the lack of backdoor defense <laughs> against the Bulls. How is the backdoor defense tonight? Better, but not, not terrific. In fact, as I told you in the pregame, yes, the, in the game on Monday, they gave up 23 baskets in the restricted area. Tonight, another 23 baskets in the restricted area. So, no, it wasn't perfect, but the difference, of course, was the Bulls didn't make nearly as many threes as they did on Monday night. They were 0 for 11 in the third quarter. I mean, how do you survive something like that? So it's epic. And, and I'll tell you what, the three-point shooting in this game for the Bulls, it's among the, the – it's only – it's the second worst by an opponent against the Knicks this season. Only that game in, in Boston where the Bulls went 7 for 46 was there a worse percentage. So it's, it's, it's one of the worst performances shooting the three against the Knicks this season. 